Here is the summary of the story Indigo by Louis Fisher. The author recounts his first visit to Gandhi's ashram in Sevagram in 1942. Gandhi offered to explain how he had decided to ask the British to leave India. In 1916, Gandhi had attended the annual session of the Indian National Congress in Lucknow. There, a peasant named Rajkumar Shukla from the district of Champaran approached Gandhi and asked him to accompany him to his district. Shukla had come to the meeting to complain about the oppressive landlords in Bihar and wanted Gandhi to help. However, Gandhi had to travel to other parts of India. Shukla accompanied him everywhere. When Gandhi returned to his ashram, Shukla followed him. Impressed with Shukla's resolve and his story, Gandhi told him that he would visit Calcutta a few months later and asked Shukla to meet him there. On the appointed day, many months later, Gandhi found Shukla waiting for him at the place agreed upon. They left for Patna by train once Gandhi was free. Shukla took Gandhi to the house of Rajendra Prasad, the future president of India. The servants recognized Shukla as a regular visitor. Assuming Gandhi to be another peasant, the servants allowed him to stay on the grounds along with Shukla, but did not permit Gandhi to draw water from the well for fear that he was an untouchable. Gandhi then went to Muzaffarpur to gather more information. He stayed at the house of Professor Malkani, a teacher in a government school. Gandhi noted that it was rare for a government employee to help him as most Indians in small towns were apprehensive about supporting anti-British agitators. As news of Gandhi's arrival spread, peasants from all over Champaran started to collect in Muzaffarpur. Even lawyers who had represented peasant groups came to meet Gandhi. Gandhi was appalled at the amount of legal fees charged. He declared that legal proceedings were not as useful as freeing the peasant from the fear of the landlord. In Champaran, most of the land was owned by the British, who rented it out to the peasants under long-term contracts. The peasants were required to grow indigo on 15% of the land and hand over the indigo crop as rent. However, when synthetic indigo was developed in Germany, natural indigo was of little use to the landlords. The landlords offered to free their tenants, farmers, from the contractual obligation to grow indigo if they agreed to pay the landlord's compensation. Many peasants who did not want to grow indigo quickly signed the agreements. Others refused to pay the compensation upon which the landlords resorted to thuggery. However, when the peasants finally learned of synthetic indigo, they realized that they had been cheated and wanted their money back. Gandhi arrived in Champaran at this juncture. He visited both the British Landlords Association as well as the British Official Commissioner to gather information. They declined to help and Gandhi went to Motihari, the capital of Champaran, accompanied by many lawyers. He continued his investigations but was soon served notice to leave the district immediately. Gandhi declined to obey the order. He was summoned to court the next day. The next morning, Motihari was crowded with peasants who had heard that a Mahatma who had come to help them was in trouble. Gandhi helped the officials control the crowd around the courthouse, thus providing the officials with proof that their authority would no longer go unquestioned. The local authorities, confused by this support for Gandhi, decided to consult their superiors and requested the judge to postpone the trial. Gandhi protested this move, admitting that he did disobey the order. He declared that he was there for a humanitarian purpose and thus could not leave. He demanded to be punished for disobeying the order to leave. The judge eventually postponed the judgment for a few days, allowing Gandhi to remain free without bail. Gandhi's lawyer friends conferred together and concluded that it would be shameful if they, the locals, left Gandhi at this moment. They informed Gandhi that they too were ready to go to jail with him. Gandhi was pleased and declared that the battle of Champaran was won. Many days later, Gandhi received a letter from the magistrate informing him that the case had been dropped on the orders of the Lieutenant Governor of the province. This was the first victory for civil disobedience in India. 
Gandhi and the lawyers then collected evidence and documents from about 10,000 peasants before he met the lieutenant governor of the province, who finally agreed to set up an inquiry commission. Gandhi was the sole representative of the peasants in the commission. Confronted by the evidence provided by the official inquiry, the planters decided in principle to make refunds to the peasants. Gandhi agreed on a 25% refund, explaining that even this would help the peasants realize his rights and his powers. This came true as in a few years the British planters left, leaving the land to the peasants. Gandhi thus dedicated almost a year to secure justice for the farmers of Champaran. But he did not stop there. He also strove hard to improve the social, cultural and health conditions of the district. Volunteers from his ashram as well as elsewhere came to educate and treat people in the district. Though the Champaran agitation had begun as an effort to help poor peasants, it was important because it demonstrated the power of civil disobedience. Gandhi was always concerned about the practical problems of people, not mere philosophies. In addition, all his actions were focused on ensuring that Indians would make themselves self-reliant rather than depend on others. In the early days of the Champaran movement, Gandhi's lawyer friends wanted Charles Freer Andrews, an English follower of Gandhi, to stay in Champaran and help them. Gandhi refused and told his friends that asking an Englishman for support was a sign of weakness. He stressed that Indians would have to be self-reliant and learn to fight their own battles. Thus, we can see that helping the peasants towards self-reliance and freeing them from the oppression of the British landlords provided Gandhi with the perfect impetus for initiating the movement for independence through peaceful means.